We all know such characters. Cocky, charming, always with a joke and a blade at the ready. They steal hearts, liberate riches, and unexpectedly save the day. But what's the real story? How do they become such gorgeous scoundrels? Let's take a look at Missouri. His childhood was very chaotic. He had a lot of parents. At first he was French, then Spanish, then French again, but really still Spanish, and at long last American. But nothing too strange about it. The world is full of such messed up stories. For example, Russia itself was conquered by Mongols for a couple of centuries, and Moscow was occupied by foreign armies at least twice. In the first case, occupants had to eat each other to survive. In the second one, many of them burned and even more froze to death. But nevertheless, Moscow was Polish and French. For a time. If we want to know Missouri properly, we have to begin with his darker, roguish side. Like some children with an unstable childhood, he was quite a bully. For example, the Mormon War. When the state governor himself said that the Mormons must be exterminated. Or bleeding Kansas. When Missouri slavery fans repeatedly attacked anti-slavery settlers in Kansas. Even during the Civil War. The Civil War itself in Missouri was rather roguelike as well. It was a state with perhaps the most intense guerrilla action. Whole counties were evacuated to eliminate it. Legendary rogues were on both sides. Confederate examples. Sentimental murderer Bloody Bill Anderson, who tried not to kill women, allegedly noble Jesse James, who deserves his own video, and crazed torturer Archie Clement, who all deserved his bullet. And on the Union side we were these guys. Bold vigilantes. I mean bold. Bold numbers. English pants are hard. They stopped murderers, but ended up as criminals though. After all this mess, Missouri started a common rogue cycle of redemption and backslide. For example, right after the Civil War, all Confederate supporters, even indirect ones, were disfranchised. But soon after, pro slavery moves back, all hail the lost cause and Jim Crow laws. For the beginning of the 20th century, the governor Joseph Holy Joe Falk suggested the Missouri idea. He wanted to make the state a leader in public morality through popular control of the law. The law! But the infamous Pendergast machine was born soon after the Holy Joe deeds. The chairman of the Democrats allied himself with a mafia boss to rule Kansas City. To those beautiful, ignorant bastards. Yeah. And yes, there were some pretty dark pages in the most recent history of Missouri. But this state was never shy to speak his mind to any authorities and to hold his ground, whatever the odds. After all, the only royalty respected here are these guys. However, the really brutal stuff began in Hollywood with Iowa. What? <clears throat> Sorry. Honey War with Iowa. One land surveyor made a mistake while calculating the state border. It was discovered, and the border was temporarily revoked. The territory was in fact for grabs. One enterprising tax collector from Missouri decided to make a quick buck there and cut down three trees with honeybees, he was arrested. And, of course, the Missourian governor decided to liberate him. And some territory besides. And the two militias were ready to fight. The Missourians were up against some hellish stuff. The Mayoans had terrifying weapons. One carried a plow cutter on a log chain. Another had an old-fashioned sausage stuffer. Like that. Well, a third brought with him a six feet iron sword. And the best part, nobody died or went home. Cranky Missourians wanted to punish someone for the wasted time. They took two big slabs of meat, named them after the governors of Missouri and Iowa, hung them from a tree and shot them to death. You don't mess with these bears. Before we'll get to the lighter side of Missouri, I would like to tell you about... Now, you probably think... Hmm, we are talking about rogues. 
So, it must be some dashing gunslinger, Frank James or Calamity Jane. Nope, there are other rogue types. There was a man, a quiet man, who went against impossible odds of society. George Washington Carver. He was born into slavery. He was kidnapped. He was rejected in colleges. And yet, and yet, he showed them all. He created hundreds of new products from peanut and sweet potato. He revolutionized a life of all southern farmers. Theodore Roosevelt himself publicly admired his work. He was called the Black Leonardo. And he had a very rogue-like motto. When you do the common things in life in an uncommon way, you will command the attention of the world. So, Missouri had some dark pages in his history. As everyone. Is even you. But he always, always had a passionate soul. He hardly belonged to the road. And not any road. The road to the West. And it's very important, if you think about it. The West is the most bestest place in many fantasy novels. Westeros is West. The North – simple-minded barbarians. The South – devilish warriors. The East – cunning lords. But the West – even elves and wizards want to go there. And Missouri opened the West for the USA. In fact, he helped to transform America from this. Me, Esther. I love thee. God help me, I love thee too. To this. Sheriff, about his duties to the camp. Huh? Luck trouble didn't jump out earlier, huh, Bullock? Might have found you mid trusted other business. All important roads began there. Oregon Trail for those who seek money. Mormon Trail for those who seek faith. California Trail. For crazy adventurers who seek, well, adventure. I used to be an adventurer like you. Everyone could and still can find the road to their dream in Missouri. And to top it all, Lewis and Clark themselves were governors of the state. Travelers dream indeed. It isn't a coincidence that one of the most famous Missourians, Samuel Clemens, took his nick after a drawing term, Mark Twain. And Walt Disney got his interest in drawing here. Even a Nobel laureate T.S. Eliot, who left the USA being very young, said once, Missouri and the Mississippi had made a deeper impression on me than any other part of the world. And maybe because of this state roguish nature, Chuck Berry, another Missourian, wrote his famous oh, baby, you Like many rogues, Missouri settled down a little after a highly exciting past and opened a tavern, so to speak. You can drink a lot there. You can eat. By God, you can eat there. You can listen to some pretty advanced minstrels. Your horse is tired? No problem. Have a mule. Missouri always kept the best mules handy. All getaway habits die hard, I guess. Feeling lucky? You can gamble here, but be careful, some say that he has a supernatural luck. Missouri voted for the winner in all but three US presidential elections from 1904. And psst, let me tell you a secret. Some say that Missouri... It's a magical place. Why? Because of the land of Oz <clears throat> Ark. These mountains are a sanctuary for a lot of forbidden magics. European witches, face healers. Who do practitioners? How do you think Devil Backbone got its name? There's something wrong with this place! You can find wonderful and oh unspeakable things there. For example, the spook light. The Arcs of Oz are a very, very beautiful place. If you dare to visit. This mystical rogue clearly has a thing for Arcs, doesn't he? I hope that nothing will knock from the other side. And there you have it. A dashing and daring rogue who likes to travel a lot, to drink a lot, and to dance a lot. He may look a little rough and rugged at first, but it's totally worth to know him better. He's caring, trustworthy, and hospitable to a fault. Just remember, it's a no-nonsense state. As they say there, you have to... Show us first. The state after my own skeptical heart. Thanks for watching. Next time, Massachusetts, an ancient and arrogant light mage with a soft spot 
or don't. More info about future videos and cartoons is on our Patreon page, and there is a lot of other stuff too, maybe. We can make a cartoon or video about your state or even a hometown. Welcome, the link is in the description.